Welcome back, watch fans. We got some breaking news for you today in the world of Anthony Farrer, the gift that keeps on giving. The gift that keeps on giving that uh, Anthony uh, is uh, going to have a movie made about his life starring Tom Cruise on the wrist, Patek Ellipse, 1970s white gold, blue dial from Japan. Fitting for the fountain blue, right? Ellipse, fountain blue. Um, Anthony Farr, my friends, Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise will be starring in the Anthony Farr timepiece gentleman movie. Uh, this is shocking. You heard it here first. Okay, my nephew Kino is very well connected to the uh, uh, Velvet Mafia. The Velvet Mafia. Have you heard of that? Google that word, the Velvet Mafia, okay? <laughs> <laughs> now, um, look, here is the deal. Um, this is not a joke, okay? In my, in my opinion, and actually not my opinion, in uh, Kino's opinion, Kino, again, is a Hollywood insider, deeply connected in the Hollywood Velvet Mafia. Uh, he is telling me that uh, Timepiece Gentleman has an opportunity to get about... Uh, a million and a half, two million dollars on the front end for his uh, story, and potentially he could make as much as 15 to 20 million dollars uh, after the movie comes out within a period of about 24 to 36 months. Uh, that's, uh, you know, if he gets something on the back end, and of course in Hollywood there's never any profits, but uh, big money in speaking fees. Uh, he's got, uh, he can get a deal with, uh, uh, some agents, William Morris, uh, CAA, whatever, Endeavor, uh, and, uh, he can get, he can get, uh, big money on the, uh, speaking tours in colleges and all that bullshit. Uh, and, uh, here is the deal. Why is Anthony going to have a movie made with Tom Cruise? Tom Cruise. Now, by the way, guys, have you ever seen the movie Tropic Thunder with Tom Cruise? Now, Tom Cruise is an amazing part of it. Tom Cruise can p play, he can play um, Anthony Farrer perfectly. He's got the look, actually. I mean, compare Tom Cruise. By the way, guys, somebody explain to me, what does this mean, this Chrome Hearts? What is this brand? I don't understand this brand. Why do people pay for this? There's a line outside the store like every day. It's, I know it's the same people who buy, like, uh, you know, all the hype stuff, but I don't understand it, like... The Supreme, and all, I, I don't get it. Like, what is the thing with this Chrome Hearts? Like, why is that, like, a thing? It's not kind of Anthony Farrer thing, so it's very fitting. But anyway, um, here's the deal. So, um, if you look at it, Anthony Farrer, he's got the perfect uh, Hollywood movie. Why? Okay, first of all, Americans love these kind of, uh, you know, self-invented people. Like, you know, Gatsby. It's a Gatsby-esque tale. Okay, a guy comes out of nowhere, obscurity, you know, the guy comes out of some small town in Texas, he's, you know, molested by his stepfather or something, he goes to jail, comes out of jail, all of a sudden he's, you know, living in a $100,000 a month penthouse, okay? That, I mean, that's the American dream, the guy is living the American dream, this is what Americans love, right? That's what the Americans love, the guy is living the American dream, you can't deny it, the guy was thinking big, you know, I, as I did a video before, he really was doing things in a, in, a, in a great way. He actually influenced the whole watch industry. I mean, who else did these crazy lifestyle videos? I mean, literally buying a Lamborghini as a marketing tool. I mean, by the way, any 12-year-old, any 15-year-old kid, I mean, that, <laughs> I mean, that is their dream, to buy a Lamborghini, <laughs> have an investor pay for it. That's what Anthony did. He got a guy pay for it. So he's got that whole thing. Now it gets better. Here is the killer. Here is, I shouldn't say killer, but here... <laughs> Here is the um, here is the real the juicy part, right? So uh, now, if you don't know, uh, Hollywood, okay, Hollywood is mostly run by sexual deviants. You know, the Velvet Mafia is mostly uh, homosexuals, right? Uh, all sorts of sexual deviants. So whether the, they could be just various versions of uh, you know some sort of sodomites. I don't know whether they're. Uh, uh, swingers, uh, lesbians, who knows, s and yeah, mostly, look, Hollywood is both mostly sexual deviants, but also heavily, heavily staffed by uh, homosexuals, right, uh, and now, by the way, Disney, Disney is, 
you know, uh, it's it, it's totally uh, overrun by homosexuals. That's why most of their movies have deep, um, you know, gay propaganda in there. Why? Well, because you know they want to normalize. Now, here's the thing, right? Now, again, you know, you, whatever you know, you do in your bedroom, God bless. You know, you do your, you do you, right? But here's what's interesting, right? So the the agenda, right? And there is an agenda. There actually is an agenda, and uh, the agenda is is this, right? What these guys really want, again, it's not a conspiracy. It's not a conspiracy. It's just a natural human thing. What they want to really do is normalize homosexuality, right? Now, how do you do it in the best way possible? Uh, imagine you do a movie with a guy who's like, you know, kind of like your average guy, you know, Anthony. And Anthony is, you know, kind of like, you know, he's got the hoodie, he's got the uh, baseball cap. I mean, I mean, he's definitely the guy. I mean, I don't know, average. I mean, he's. You know, when I first saw that guy, I said, this guy's got to be gay. Because, you know, I remember, you know, I uh, I lived, uh, I think I said, I told you guys, I, I lived in Chelsea for about six months. I had a cheap deal in an apartment when I was a kid. And that is, like, the ground zero of the gay community. I think, what was my apartment? It was an 8th, no, it was 25th Street between 8th and 9th Avenue. I mean... No, no, between 7th and 8th Avenue, excuse me, between 7th and 8th Avenue, this is like 25 years ago more, right? I had this great deal, top floor, tiny studio, but it was great. Um, but when you walked outside onto 8th Avenue, it was a completely different world. Like, all the guys were all dressed like Anthony. They had the tank tops, all very buff. That's the, that, that was the look, right? The very, these guys were working out all the time, uh, very well groomed, you know, hair perfect, everything very, you know, that whole look. So, I mean, like, I see that look. I think, I think, you know, Chelsea, Chelsea dudes from Chelsea, 8th Avenue, the 8th Avenue crowd. Um, and, uh, look, what these guys really want to do is they want to kind of normalize uh, kind of so that, you know, they, there is no, you know, they're looking for an opportunity basically to have a good uh, kind of gay um, role model or hero, if you will, in a movie, right? There, there, there is not a lot of gay mainstream movies. So if you can have a mainstream movie with a gay character it would be highly desirable right these guys would love it right they would love to have that um and by the way anthony's i mean i think he's a kind of a sympathetic character i mean i think he's actually um you know uh he's a sympathetic character in in terms of look the american morality has declined precipitously look at look at these movies that we're making where we you know idolize people who are basically you know degenerates and criminals whether it's uh you know the wolf of wall street the jordan belfort or that russian prostitute uh, chick uh, who uh, uh what's her name Ka catherine delvey whatever she called it. you know the one who claimed to be some sort of you know aristocrat uh uh billionaire in new york and you know she scammed people not out of big money but like you know, a couple hundred grand or something delvey or something that was like a netflix movie or something but, you know, all of a sudden, in the last, you know, 10 years, our culture has deteriorated to such a point that, you know, these people are considered heroes in a way. Now, uh, so you, here's an opportunity for the Velvet Mafia to take a, a guy and basically to have a gay character uh, as a positive kind of role model, if you will, as a starring role in a, uh, in a, in a, in a, in a, a mainstream movie. That's a very rare. I mean, how many, there's just not that many gay, I mean, how many straight people want to see a movie about a gay guy? Not a lot, unless it's like, you know, mainstream. I mean, Anthony's like a, you know, comes across like, he's like a normal guy, basically, right? He fits in kind of the normal world. So, do you see what this opportunity is? Okay, now, again, the guys who green light these movies, most most of it is the Velvet Mafia, right? So, you got the, the big uh, homosexual uh, club, is uh, deeply involved in green lighting these movies production and the whole the whole thing right so if you have a movie like that uh it's it's going to be a, it's it's a sure thing to get green lit which means finance produced etc so uh look if i had the opportunity um i would option the anthony anthony life story um and i would fucking get it because it's going to be a, it's a sure it's a sure winner okay trust me my friends this is a sure winner. Uh, okay, now, Kino, who's very well connected with, uh, you know, uh, the uh, the Velvet Mafia, tells me that uh, Tom Cruise, 
Ooh, look at this. We got some meetings here. Um, Tom Cruise is uh, going to be in this film now. Um, Tom Cruise, uh, again, uh, looks like Anthony. Now, here's here's what they like about this. Okay, so you got this gay character, right? The guy, the guy, basically was a um, male prostitute, right? He was. Uh, now, I don't know if he was initially gay or gay for pay, as they call it, or uh, you know what what the exact uh, setup is, but. He basically, we do know that he was a male prostitute providing um, massages with obviously extras. Now, what those extras were, which it's fascinating to know. I mean, was was it you know, <laughs> was it was it just uh, you know uh, hand hand uh, hand jobs or was it uh, you know full service? Uh, shall we say? Uh, it's. I mean, it would be fascinating to know now. Basically, this movie is going to be like Boogie Nights, okay? This is going to be the Boogie Nights, the gay Boogie Nights of of, of the watch world, right? If you remember that, that great classic movie, Boogie Nights, think of this. This is actually Boogie Nights combined with Wolf of Wall Street. That's what this is. This is That's how I would pitch this. I mean, this is how this movie should be pitched. Uh, Boogie Nights meets Wolf of Wall Street with a gay male prostitute. So it's actually Midnight Cowboy. The Midnight Cowboy meets Boogie Nights meets Wolf of Wall Street. Shit, I am giving away such great stuff in this video. I mean, this is amazing. By the way, Anthony, if you're watching, uh, I want a piece of this for because for, I'm, I'm, I'm selling this here. I am actually marketing this for you right here. So, yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a great high-concept type of film. So you got this guy. It's a male prostitute comes out of nowhere all of a sudden he's um you know selling watches to like you know billionaires basically uh, not i don't know billions but yeah i'm sure i'm sure he's he's got some you know heavy hitter clients mostly mostly you know multi-millionaire type guys but um and again he's got the lambos he's got the hundred thousand dollar penthouse he's got, it's the whole it's like everything it's got all the stuff that you know this that looks good on screen it's, uh, you know, it's the whole, uh, and again, what's the other movie that was big? Uh, Billionaire Boys Club, that was a classic. I remember that movie when it came out, the original, back in the 80s. Uh, so, yeah, here's the more some Anthony Ferris stuff here. So, yeah, so this is people, you know, that's what sells uh, in Hollywood, these types of stories. So, um, yeah, Tom Cruise will be starring in this movie. Now, Anthony... Uh, when well, he comes out of jail, uh, again he, he's got money to be coming to be made from the um, actual uh, film from the back end, maybe a little bit, but mostly speaking fees. You know, he's going to go on a tour and say, "Hey, you know, I was." Uh, by the way, in colleges, it would be huge because look, all these colleges—it's all like these left-wing woke, these woke. Uh, you know, they, they're looking to book these woke. Uh, speakers and all that, right? They have a big budget, and it doesn't get better than a guy who's, uh, you know, homosexual uh, convict. He can say he was, uh, you know, marginalized. Um, what's the word? He was marginalized, right? He comes from, you know, a rural. Well, actually, he. The only, listen, the only problem is he's white. That is Anthony's only problem. If he was black and possibly retarded. It would be an Oscar, sure, surely a shoe for an Oscar. But yeah, so he was, you know, like poor, poor white kid, you know, basically white trash from, you know, somewhere in Texas. And all of a sudden, you know, he's, uh, you know, you know, sucking and stroking his way into the, um, <laughs> to the top of the, to the top of the, to the top of the watch world, to the top of the watch world. Amazing, right? And. Um, you know, he's uh, from, from, from the outhouse to the penthouse. That's literally the Anthony Farr story. From the outhouse, from the, you know, the Texan, uh, you know, he's, he's some, he was, you know, I don't know, some shit-kicking cowboy, cowpoke kicking, pick poking in, uh, what is it, uh, uh, cow pie, whatever they do there. Uh, <laughs> kicking cows, I don't know, picking up shit from bulls. Are these real? smell yeah this is real this Valentine's Day um, by the way the Super Bowl is coming here uh, next week and uh, I understand that all the um, 
uh, basically the landing slots for private jets uh, kind of filled up and also female companionship prices that's right female entertainment rental services uh, the price is going to be through the roof so um, uh, any of you ladies watching this and you want to make big money Vegas is the place to be this weekend uh, this is uh, this is your opportunity to, to be the, the female Anthony Farah <laughs> imagine this imagine if there was a female version of Anthony uh, that would be uh, crazy. That would be like, oof, that would be like off, off the charts. But uh, yeah, this is this is gonna be, I think, an, uh, an amazing movie. Uh, you got this again. You got this, uh, you know, uh, come up tale. Everybody loves that. You know, guy coming up from the bottom to the penthouse, literally from the bottom to the top to the penthouse. Uh, you know. He's, sucking his way to the top, so you got that element, you got sordid sexual deviant stuff, uh, you have, um, you have, uh, uh, violence, also, oh, you got the robbery, so you got the violence, you got a l little, little, uh, sprinkling of, of violence in there, uh, he was tied up, right, he's tied up, so you got kind of like a bondage thing go <laughs> going on, yeah, a lot of these guys in Hollywood, they were into the bondage stuff, uh, and, um, yeah, you got money, you got flashy stuff, you got, um, I mean, what else is missing? There's not, I mean, this has literally everything, everything. So, um, that is why Tom Cruise has, uh, signed up to play the Anthony, the Anthony Farrer story. And you heard it here first. I am actually, um, getting a piece of the action for, uh, putting this deal together. And, um... Uh, you'll be seeing you'll be seeing me uh, at the um, at the uh, at the Oscars uh, next uh, next year. I'll be thanking uh, Michael Ovitz. Michael Ovitz, it's gonna be my first thank you. And um, you know that is uh, that's the way it works, my friends. Okay, let me know what you punters think. Leave your vicious comments below, your nasty vicious comments. And um, if you want a review of your collection, send in your emails to. Brutal watch reviews at gmail.com. Brutal watch reviews at gmail.com.